you all know this, right? This graph here. Do you remember it? Have you seen Hans Forsling presenting it? I'm gonna try to show it here to you. Each bubble represents a country. This big one here in India is India. The other big one there is China. The size of the bubble is the size of the population of the country. And the colors are the regions. So this pink color is Asia, the blue is Africa. Europe, where we are here, is the, ye is the yellow. And the green are the Americas. Have you seen this graph before? I hope so, right? So Hans became famous showing this graph. And I worked with Hans, I was his assistant actually, until he passed away last year. And the whole work at the GetMinder Foundation, where now I'm head of operations, is to try to make statistics like this about the world understandable. Wait, I'm talking about statistics, but I didn't show how these stat is statistics, right? I only showed you a bunch of bubbles. So, look at the graph. Here, we have income, income per capita, so countries in this side are rich. And over here, we have poorer countries on the left. And the, on the vertical axis, we have lifespan, life expectancy. So it's pretty much to see if countries are uh, healthy or not. You can see that most countries that are rich have high life expectancy. And the same thing happens here. You don't see many poor countries with high life expectancy, right? These are amazing statistics about the world that shows the state of the world and we're trying to make them understandable. But still, some people don't understand the world and they keep calling some countries developing countries or first world country. We don't like those labels. We're trying to make the world understandable with, you know, if you need labels, let's put other easier labels. This is the same thing, income, GDP per capita. Let's just put the bubbles over there in level one, level two, three, and four. Easier than saying, this is a low-income country, low to middle-income countries, high to middle-income country, rich countries. Ooh, let's just call them level one, two, three, and four. A couple days ago, I realized that I have lived in Nepal, which is a level one country. My husband is from Nepal, so I have family there. I have lived in India, level two. I lived in Delhi for many years. I'm from Brazil. That's why you hear this accent. Level three. And I lived in the US and in Sweden. Top of the top, level four. So I think I've lived in a lot of places. I know the world. I've seen it. I know I'm young, you know, but I've seen it. The world is like that. I, <clears throat> I've seen poverty. That's what I thought. This is where my father grew up. Let me show here. This is very cool. It's in a rural um, town of Brazil in the state of Minas Gerais, in the middle of nowhere, hard to reach, four hours driving, muddy roads, and really in the middle of nowhere. So I thought, I've seen poverty, look at this house, this other house here was built later, this is the bedroom, here we had pigs, they raised pigs over there, and here we had horses, and here we have a lake right there where we used to fish, so I've seen it, you know? And also, look at this. This was my everyday life in India. I used uh, latrine toilets. So I thought I've seen it all. But that was before I started seeing statistics, like the bubbles I was just showing you. We I understand the world much better with statistics, but we see the moving bubbles and we see Hans Wesley talk and we find it beautiful, but we forget. So we decided at GapMinder to find a ways that people wouldn't forget. So we decided to take pictures. Look at this, why is this important? <clears throat> I used to think that I lived in the middle of the income scale. Let's think like this, imagine everybody in the world, you, everybody in this room, your friends in, I don't know, in Pakistan, in India, in uh, Chile, everybody lives on the same street, okay? The same street where you live right now. The poorer, the poor people to the left, the rich people on the right. Where would you live? I thought I lived here somewhere in the middle. Because, you know, I grew up in Brazil, I went to a private school, and my classmates, well, they were very rich. Some of them, their parents had helicopters. I'm not kidding. There was one who <laughs> once said that um, he didn't bring the homework to the teacher because he forgot it had a helicopter. <laughs> One of my close friends had a house with a huge swimming pool and a wine cellar. So I thought, okay, 
that is rich, what I am here is middle class. Because I didn't have a driver to take me to school, I took a bus. <laughs> so I thought that compared to the world population, again, rich are here, poor are here, I thought I was somewhere in the middle. But now that I see statistics about the world, how the world actually is, I know that I'm here. I have always been here, even though I was in Brazil, you know, with these millionaire friends. I realized that actually this is rich. I was rich and I am rich being here and you are rich just by being here in Sweden. So we decided to show that to everyone so everyone can understand this. So we sent photographers to homes all over the world. 50 different countries were trying, 55 actually, were trying now to reach the, all the 200 or something nations. Um, we have taken pictures of more than, what, now it's about 300 families. And we took pictures of their beds, of people's beds. So this is like everyday life. People's beds and cooking pot and the favorite toys and um, the toilet, the bed. And this is what is the result. It's a two, look at that. This is called Dollar Street. Everybody lives on Dollar Street. This here is the income per month per adult. And these are the countries where I took the pictures. So remember, poor in the left, this is the middle. Most people live in the middle, remember that? And this is the rich. So what I'm showing here, where I'm gonna see, you can see the scrolling, it's just several families on Dollar Street. Look, always remember, this is poor here, and then it becomes low income. And in, on Dollar Street, you can select also per region and different countries as well. I said we took pictures of everything inside people's homes, right? So look, look how many things we took pictures of. It's really everything inside your home. I'm gonna select something over there just for you to have an idea of how life looks different in different incomes. So these are homes. Look at the quality of the material in different income levels. Look at this. Fragile, hard to survive extreme weather. And as they progress along the street, they become richer than the quality of the material is different. I am selecting here now only middle income. Did you see changing over there on top? This is middle, now we're changing to low income. All of these are poor families all around the world. And now we have rich families. Does this look like your home now? Do you feel more at home now? Now we're gonna change to an activity, an everyday life. Let's see how life differs in different incomes for getting water. Can you see the difference here? You have to walk to get water, walk a couple hours to get water, and we actually here have tap water, hot and cold. So life differs a lot in different incomes, right? Let's get another thing now. Let me show you cooking. Everybody likes food. How does it change to cook in open fire, or with cooking gas, or now with electricity. Can you see that it doesn't depend actually where they are. What is making a difference in their lives, in our lives, is our income. And if you click on a home like this, I click on the stove, and now I can see all of the pictures inside that home. It's like we're visiting this family. So, Dollar Street is very beautiful for making visual comparisons, which is um, a complement to understanding data, to understanding statistics. It's getting the touch, you know, the, the feeling, the human touch. I'm gonna show you now a video of what we have learned with Dollar Street. I want you to pay attention here in the corner. You're gonna see a little home moving, and it's gonna move in this direction. And now listen to the sound as well. See if you can notice any difference. I'm 
Amerika. This last one here, she is an example of what living in extreme poverty is. This, <coughs> sorry, it's her wall, and it's also tagged on Dollar Street as her toothpaste. Because she comes from, lives in extreme poverty, she doesn't even have, can afford toothpaste. She actually does like this in the wall and uses the mud, the sand that is that material mixed with water to clean her teeth. This is the difference that income makes, how you live your everyday life. Look at this. This is how people in extreme poverty live. And then as you get a little bit richer, you start having a plastic toothbrush. And then maybe if you get a little bit richer, you have one toothbrush, two toothbrush each in your home, right? And this is us. We have beautiful, colorful toothbrushes. Since we're kids, we can choose how they look like. Actually, nowadays, we also have that electronic toothbrush, like that people like to use. You're supposed to hold them like this, right? This is for rich people. This is not for most of the world population. This is very interesting to understand how income is much more important in our lives than actually the place where we live, or the country, or the culture in which we live. Look at this. Look at this home in the United States. This is the whole population of the United States. This is called the income mountain. The, rich, the poor people are here, the rich people are here, most people who are in the middle, so there's a lot of people here in the United States who live in this income. And this is the Howards. They are very rich and this is their home. And this is where their house is located on the Dollar Street. They are very rich. And now let's see a poor home. They had this. She lives on social security. Her daughter goes to a public school. How do their lives differ? Huh, this is how they store their cutlery. Okay, I'm getting too extreme here. So let's put somebody in the middle, the Robinsons, middle income. This is their sinks. Actually, this sink from the Hadley is also their bathroom sink and their kitchen sink. Can you see the difference between this marble, beautiful sink and the others? This, again, in the United States, same country, completely different way of living. What else do we have? Living rooms. Next, let's see China. Do you see the difference within China as well? Let's see. So we have here rich, middle, and poor. We have the young Wang and Mu, and these are their homes. These are the sofas. This is how they cook food. Can you see? Same country, different incomes, very different ways of living. This is again, let's see China. A lot of people in China, as you can see, right? Because the mountain is huge. And the US. How does it differ in these countries? Rich people in the US, rich people in China, here they come again. This is their best. Very similar, isn't it? Look, this one here actually is the one in the US. If, you, if I didn't tell you, you'd think that it's the one in China, right? It's the one in the United States. And they both have leather couches. Oops. They both have leather couches. They both have a very similar play playground for their children. Very similar lives, completely different parts of the world. Let's see now how do the poor look like in different parts of the world. However, we couldn't find a super duper poor family in the United States. I mean, we, the, the poorest we found were the Hadleys. So we had to re resort to Nigeria where we found a very poor home. How do their lives look like? This is their ceiling. It's a um, straw covered with the plastic. And this is their sofas. And this is how they store rice. And they're gonna have fish for dinner. And here they're boiling water. Completely different parts of the world. Very similar way of doing things, of doing their everyday lives. <coughs> this is the first thing we learned with our street. So Dollar Street also helps us to understand that what we think of poor is not really poor. This is extreme poverty. How do the poorest people in the world live? These are their homes. A uh, bed on the floor. This is their ceiling. Again, a straw with a plastic on top. And you can see the countries here, they are changing. I'm not going to say the names, but you can see that it's normally in different parts of the world. And then we have how you prepare food, how you eat your food. And then you have who, oh, when you can't even afford shoes, or when you can't really afford much um, cutlery, you eat quite similarly. And this is how you store salt. Remember how you store salt. I'm gonna come back to this one. And this is 
Do you know what it is? Bathroom. Go into the bathroom. There you go. So I told you, right? <clears throat> that I thought that I knew what poverty looked like. Does this ceiling look like this? I think I was very wrong about saying that I know poverty and that I know the word, isn't it? Let's see, look at this. This is a drawing that Hans, Hans Rosling did for me when he was explaining to me about the MDGs. You know, the Sustainable Development Goals, so before them we had the Millennium Development Goals, right? So Hans was explaining to me how hard it is to collect data who live in extreme poverty. He did that to explain this to me. Imagine that this is a village in a low-income country, in a rural part, all right? This is, the, this is the village boundary. And then this village has a river. And then people usually move and make their lives around the river, right? And then they make a road. And usually the center of activity in a home is here, where the river crosses the road. This is where schools are made, and this is where we have money flocks and businesses, etc. This is what we here normally see. We don't see this the pockets of poverty. This is where extreme people in extreme poverty live. They are usually hidden by mountain, forest, fields, rivers. This is where it's very hard to reach. And, but those people who live in extreme poverty are about one billion people, rounding up to one billion people in the world today. The majority of the world population lives in the middle. Remember this, I'm going to say this over and over again. Most people live in the middle. And this is how most people in the world live. Look at this. Light, the bulb, and their beds. Much a big improvement from sleeping on the floor, right? And their salt. Remember how the poor store their salt? And cutlery. And they have more than one pen. Now a big improvement on their ceiling, right? And shoes and mobile phones, and toys, and garbage. This is most of the world population that we live, they live in the middle. And here comes us, uh, a level four. We, rich people, everybody has had an all-star, right? I'm sure you still have all-stars, right? <laughs> and what else we have there? Same kind of leather couches, and then we have beautiful fruits that are put inside, looks the same, whether in Kenya, in Sweden, or wherever you are when you are rich level four, and then we have brushes, and books, and toilet paper. If I didn't tell you that this toilet paper was in Palestine, you wouldn't know, because it looks the same for everyone. And then we have clothes, and remember the light on level, uh, in the middle, how it looked like? It's a huge difference now, right? This colorful, beautiful, decorated light, and then the pets, they all look beautiful, and the floor. I told you we took pictures of everything inside people's house, right? Even the floor. Floor in China and Mexico, completely different parts of the world, still very similar material. Because it doesn't matter where we live, what makes a difference in how we live is simply how much income we have. So in that minder, we created a framework for you to remember this, for you to remember that most people live in the middle, can you see? We are 7 billion people in the world today, we are rounding it down. This is a logarithmic scale showing the income of the world. And 1 billion people live around, you know, extreme poverty, here, level 1. 3 billion people live in level 2, 2 billion people live in level 3, and only, ah, a little bit lives on level 4. This is us. And remember that life here is very different from life here, on level 1. This is for us to remember. So now I want to invite you to check out our street, to challenge your worldview, and see how life really is across the world. Thank you.